All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about uh, square bill crankbaits. All right guys, so I wanna get this done pretty quick, so uh, let's get into it. So first of all, a square bill crankbait, if you don't know what they are, they are uh, basically, most of the time, they're a shallow diving crankbait. Um, and they basically just have a square bill on them. So I'm going to try to get one untangled here. Uh, so, right here, this is one of my favorites. So they have a square bill, right? A normal crankbait will have that round bill. Um, let me just see here. Uh, what's that? Uh, I don't have one laying around, but a normal crankbait will have a rounded bill. And, uh... What this does is, with the round bill, say you bring it up to a piece of cover, right? You, uh, say there's a stick here, and you hit that with a round bill, a lot of times it tends to roll over, and it will get snagged. The square bill, I think you see it's square, so it's going to stop it from, from rolling over. So it's going to hit that, and it can't roll over. It's going to hit it, and usually it's just going to pop right over it, um, or just bounce off of it. And so it's, it's a very, very um, good way to fish or good, good bait to fish. Um, they're really fun to fish. Uh, they can be really good. You can get on a bite um, up shallow, especially this time of year. Uh, basically, I fish these in the spring, summer, and fall, but this time of year, and in the fall, of course, but talking this time of year, you can really get on, you know, those pre-spawn fish. They're moving up shallow. You can find a little school of, um, a little area, uh, say a little creek or something that the, the pre-spawn fish are moving up, and you can get on them with a square bill, and uh, catch, you can catch quite a few of them. Um, so that's for the gear I'm going to fish a square bill on is going to be um, my first choice is some kind of cranking rod uh, whether it be the Dobbins. is the Dobbins Fury. Um, what I'd recommend is the Dobbins for the Dobbins. The Dobbins Fury um, has a cranking rod, seven foot medium heavy cranking rod. Link down in the description so when you click on the link it's going to bring you to Dobbins uh, or, or say Dobbins rod. Right? And you have to kind of scroll through and it's going to show you the different models. And uh, it will say 7 foot medium heavy cranking. And that is the rod I would suggest for you to fish crankbaits on. Uh, now if you do not have a crankbait rod or you can't afford to get one, uh, use, I would take your lightest rod uh, next to a crankbait. So in this case it's a medium heavy. Um, it's actually a heavy, but anyway. It's like, I'd take like a medium heavy, right? Your closest rod you can get to a crankbait rod and I would throw monofilament on it. And that's gonna help with the stretch. A lot of people take rods way too far and they say, well, you gotta have every single rod right for the situation. And it's true to a, a point, but a lot of times switching up your line is a huge deal, right? If I take a crankbait rod and I throw a braid on it, it's gonna have a, com and then I pull, I grab that braid and I pull that rod, it's gonna feel completely different than if I put monofilament, right, which has a ton of stretch. If I put that on there and pull it, it's gonna be a lot more flexible. You're gonna feel the difference. Um, so by taking a little bit heavier rod, like a medium heavy, uh, like a medium heavy fast action and putting monofilament on it, you can turn it into, not the perfect crankbait rod, but it will get the job done. It's something that you can throw crankbaits on and not be, you know, not be worried about losing fish all the time. Yeah, you're not, you know, with crankbaits, you're not going to land every fish anyway, just how it is, because the treble hooks, it's just the way that they are. But your landing ratio, your land uh, hook, to ran, hook to land ratio is going to go up uh, by putting monofilament on there rather than fishing like fluorocarbon on a heavier rod. That mono will at least give it a little bit more uh, stretch a little bit more give so when those fish get at those treble hooks uh, they don't tear out of their mouth or they don't throw them um, but for a crankbait rod if you actually had one I'm gonna say a seven foot fast a seven foot medium fast action rod is a good uh, square bill rod uh, or a medium heavy moderate action so uh, a medium to medium heavy uh, usually you want a moderate action rod what that means is this rod is just going to have, I'll show you, but this rod is going to have a lot of bend. It's going to bend all the way down into here, all the way down into the bottom of the rod, right? So this is a fast action rod, but these dobbins are a little bit more moderate. So it says fast action, but it actually bends, probably bends almost halfway. 
and so it, it actually has a good bend to it. Um, it's a heavy rod though, so it takes a heavier force to bend it, you know, but it, but then when it bends, it bends about halfway. And that's what you want with a uh, with either a medium or a medium heavy rod. You want it to bend down at least halfway or down into the bottom part of this rod. So it's going to have a lot of bend. Um, that's what you're looking for in a crankbait rod. Um, for the line, like I said, if you have an actual crankbait rod uh, that has the bend, then you don't need the mono to make up for it. So I'd throw fluorocarbon. Uh, for my choice, uh, fishing a square bill, 15 pound fluorocarbon. And that's because with a square bill, you always want to be um, around cover, whether it's rocks, uh, maybe some docks, uh, you're banging it into the side of the docks, you're banging it um, into wood. Um, like my pond right now, or my local little ponds, right? They've, you walk the bank and they've got a lot of lay downs, you got sticks in there, branches, um, stuff like that. You can go and throw this around and bang them up against that. Um, and you can do that with 15 pound uh, fluorocarbon and not worry about it. Um, so I'll link, uh, I'll link all the stuff that I use down in the description. Um, all the line, the reel and everything. So if you don't have a crankbait rod, get the closest that you can to it and then pair it up with monofilament. And that will help a lot with, uh, with those fish being able to grab it and not uh, throwing the bait so much. Uh, you're still not going to land you know, as many as you would as a crankbait rod, but it's going to help a lot uh, just throwing the monofilament on there. Um, for the real square bills, a little bit different than deeper diving crankbaits. Um, I like to throw a faster gear ratio reel. Um, earlier spring, like we are now, you can throw a little bit slower gear ratio just to uh, slow the bait down a little bit. But when those fish are actively, like if I'm if I am on a pre-spawn bite and I'm in the back of a pocket and the fish are pre-spawn, uh, maybe there's some spawning, and they're actively back there feeding on bait fish, feeding up for the spawn, I'll throw it and I'll use a faster gear ratio and I will, I'll burn that bait pretty good. Get it burning, get it buzzing along, and bounce it off of cover. If you're not bouncing a square bill off of cover, you have something wrong with you. Uh, that's what they are designed to do, and that's how they work the best. Throw it in there, don't be afraid to get hung up, bounce it off of cover. Now don't, with me saying that, don't be an idiot and throw it into uh, a grass field, or, you know, throw it into a mat. But uh, obviously, you know, you wouldn't do that. But throw it in a little bit thicker cover than you normally would. You know, try it out. Um, obviously, don't cast up into a tree. Uh, but if you got some branches laying in the water, you got a piece of timber, uh, you got some rocks, throw it in there and bang it around. And uh, that is going to help you get bit. Um, so for colors, um, colors for these uh, crankbaits, I like to use, I have three main colors and then I have... Uh, I have a couple other colors I like too, but for main colors, dirty water is going to be a chartreuse. And it can be anything. This is a KVD 1.5. Again, I'll link all the baits in the description. KVD 1.5 shallow is, uh, that's what this one is. And it's a chartreuse black back. And so that's a really good dirty water color. Um, but it can be substituted. You could substitute it for this right here. That's a fire tiger. And that's green and chartreuse. Uh, with black on there, some orange, and uh, basically, I mean, you do the same thing. Just something, just a bright color, just to get those fish's attention in the dirtier water, right? You've got dirtier water, uh, throw those brighter greens, um, chartreuse and greens. Um, that's going to be my one of my favorites. Um, another color I'm going to throw a lot is red, some kind of red, especially in the springtime. Uh, some kind of red because these things you bounce these around rocks and those bass are up there digging around looking for crawfish you have one of these bouncing around uh bouncing off them rocks and it will get hammered uh that red color really imitates a craw now if, if you don't you kind of got to match the hatch um on these next couple colors but this especially with the craw because sometimes uh usually in the spring you all the craws are red but sometimes, depending on where you're at, they're not. Sometimes you can substitute that red for some kind of brown, right? That's kind of like more of a brown, maybe more of a green pumpkin brown. Um, and that's going to be more of, you know, your brown craw. Um, and I'm not like no scientist or anything. I have no idea what color craws are, uh, what time of the year. Uh, but usually what I do is I'll look around the bank and if I see some craw, 
I see a bright red craw, I'm throwing a bright red crankbait. If I see darker brown craws next to the bank, I'm gonna throw a darker brown. Um, and so, most of the time, I'm gonna be throwing the red to imitate a craw. Uh, but if you know that your lake, if your craws are not red, uh, then throw that, you can substitute that out for some kind of brown um, or green pumpkin. Um, but those two, you can get them both, like I do, for different situations, or if you know you, which color your craws are. Um, and most of, the time, most of the time, they're actually going to change color throughout the year. But if you know what they main, the main color is, I would get the main color of craw. So you're imitating, uh, you're imitating not really anything with the chartreuse. It's just kind of a color just to be bold, just so that way the fish just to show itself. Um, then you've got a natural, some kind of natural crawdad color, right? It's a natural craw. And then a bait fish. That's going to be my third uh, color option, would be a bait fish. For me, and most of the time, it's going to be a bluegill. This right here, that is a killer bait. I'll be nice, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's the Excite Baits uh, One Ball Bang Square Bill. I'll leave that in the description. Um, I'll be nice to you. This bait, it's if you want to catch fish on a square bill, that's what you need to throw. Uh, at least for me, it catches a lot of fish. Yeah, I mean, if I'm out there throwing like a KVD Silent or one of these normal ones that has little rattles in it and I'm not catching fish, I'll pick up one of these, throw it out there, boom, first cast and catch a fish. Uh, my brother actually caught his PB on that, around seven pounds uh, on this little square bill. Um, but anyway, bluegill color um, is what I go with for my bait fish. You can go, if you have shad, then you want some kind of white or silver. Usually they have like some silver ones with some silver flash in them uh, to imitate shad. Um, but just imitate your bait fish. So you need that standout one, you need some kind of crawfish, and then some kind of bait fish. And that's going to get you going most of the time. Um, and then you can branch off and get some like this one here, which could also imitate maybe a shad a little bit. But this is the sexy, I think it's chartreuse sexy shad by KVD 1.5. And uh, it's white chartreuse got some yellow in there a blue uh it's got the blue uh black blue back on it um sorry and uh it just kind of it doesn't i mean it could look like a shad but it's just something just to something different something to present to the fish that um you know but it just it works for me i catch fish on it um so anyway those are the color options those are my square bills that's how you fish them um, make sure to bang them into cover and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.